afternoon, everyone. I'm going to call the Finance Committee meeting to order. Councilor Adams. Councilor LaBarge, Councilor Murphy. Also, Susan Wright is here. Joe Cook, uh, Procurement Officer, is here. And Pam Powers is here. Uh, there is no one in the room for public comment. We're all that's here, so we don't have to deal with public comment. Um, we do want to deal with our minutes, though. You want to make a motion on the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for July 28th, 2015. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. So the only topic on our agenda for I just want to also say that you should be um, approving the ones from August 13th. All is up. Another set? Another motion? Yeah. So I move, move to approve the minutes of August. Second. No. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Oh, there it is. Two sets of changes. So the only thing on the agenda tonight is our discussion of uh, <coughs> the RFP for auditing services. I understand we had. Uh, four applicants apply by the deadline and uh, Mr. Cook has volunteered to uh, provide a quick review for us um, of the services relative to they all meet the minimum requirements and are they all legitimately on the table so the floor is yours. Um, what I looked at is whether they were proposing uh, and their numbers are based on our scope of service. Mm -hmm. uh, they are not say that definitively it would be difficult for me to ever say that they their numbers represent you know their complete agreement with everything we've said but I can say they definitely are not um, we would have to go back to them and have you know, clarifications and corrections to make sure that they're giving us services that we want or we change the services we're asking for to meet their expectation so none, none of the four uh, well no there were several problems with Mellet and Heath, uh, one problem with Powers and Sullivan, one problem with Clifton, Larson, and Allen. All right, and the Scanlon proposal? I didn't find any problem with the services they're proposing. Okay. And whose proposal? Scanlon's. And so what was the problem of, I think it's Mellison's, you know, found the problem? Yeah. And also on Powers and Sullivan, or was it the other? Right, I can give you the details. Um, sure. Melance and Heath uh, limited. We asked an RRP for them to audit four to six departments that we would choose for them each year. Uh, they limited their audits to four departments. How many did you ask for? Four to six. Okay, so they were limited. And, and they did what? We said we would asked them to audit four to six, they limited it to four, so they're not within what we asked. If they did four, it would be right? If we asked for six and they wouldn't do it without being paid more, then that would be. Oh, so you, let me just clarify. So you, I mean, how would you just, I mean, four to six, so how would that, how would it be decided for four, five, or six? Uh, the, I believe the financial team would. Usually the financial team. Would see the which departments need some extra work. And it varies from four to six each year. So we want to be scope. The scope to say there are five this year, there are six, four next year. So we they they just didn't meet, you know, and they could, we could ask them for a new number to allow for up to six if we wanted to. Mm -hmm. I think the bigger issue with uh Melanson and Heath was the grants. Because um they said they, they quoted what, three grants total um one. One grant from MPS and one, one grant from, from uh, Smith Vogue and one grant being CPG, whereas like NPS can have up to 25 or 30 grants. Smith Vogue, how many did they say? Uh, five to ten. Five I'm sorry, could you clarify that? I don't understand. Well, the school department and Smith Vogue have a, a number of grants. NPS has a lot more. Mm -hmm. They have. I think it was 20 to 25, it may have been 25 to 30, and every year they are looked at, they are um, either income and outgo are, are looked at by the auditors, and then they look at a number of audits more intensively, the bigger ones, the new ones, things where the rules have changed for auditing. Um, Melton Heath has limited their, under their basic fee, to do one grant for Smithville, one grant for NPS, and if we want more than that, they're going to charge us $3,000 per grant. 
So we could ask, go back again, ask them for their price to do all, of, give them the number of grants we expect, and say, what's your number to do all of that within the basic fee? Uh, they also- Joe, also, I want to ask you a question on that. You're saying that they would charge 3,000 for each grant, correct? Right. Now, what does scale on charge? It's all within a basic fee. Well, but for how many grants would they do? All. They would look at everything. I spoke to Wendy Blanchett at MPS and Nancy Roberts up at Smith Folk, and they both said that they looked at every grant every year. How many grants are those? I mean, uh, ballpark. I mean, right? uh, over 20 for MPS, just, uh, just under 10 for Smith Folk. If you look at page 31 of the grants, and you propose a value of 20, that's where they calculate the grant Is, are not is not the on. price is not yeah. is not accurate given right. adding all words to the grant. Right, right. So if you look at their price proposal under federal audits, they have Smith Folk. It's on page um, 20, 31. Sorry, 31. Okay. So if you look at under federal audits, um, they have Smith Folk one grant audit, NPS one grant audit, and then CDBG. And underneath, they write additional fee for each grant required to be audited in excess of the three noted above, three thousand. So that somewhat doesn't make sense because, like, one grant could be twenty thousand came in and twenty thousand went out to a consultant. So like that would be like basically three transactions. Other grants could be hundreds of transactions because they might be an eight hundred thousand dollar spend grant that went to salaries and everything else. So. I think um, charging it on a $3,000 per grant basis doesn't really take into account that some grants are going to be very minimal, some grants are going to be more work. So if you decided you wanted to get more information from them, we can give them like, the estimated number of grants that we typically do. But that they're the lowest of the, when you look at them, but if you take this into account, they're not. It's hard to determine exactly what that number but is. Right now, you can be the lowest bid, and we do not have to take the lowest no, bid. No, you don't have We to. can take middle bid, the highest bid, or whatever, who has the experience and who will take care of auditing in our city in an appropriate way, in a way that everybody will be able to work with the, the auditor, just like we have with scaling and so forth. I have great concerns about this company. I just feel uncomfortable with them in regards to if they're charging that for one grant and then for other grants, how long is it going to take this company, I'm asking you, Joe, this one, to get on its feet to learn what our city is actually all about? And what's that fee going to be? Is well, that going to be an extra added on? Because for sure they're going to have to spend at least a good year to know what our city and our departments are all about and talking with the directors and so forth. That is built into the basic fee. Uh, they realize, they all realize that uh, coming in as a new auditor is going to take extra effort in the first year to uh, figure out how we do things and to adjust their auditing to that you know, uniqueness. Do they have enough of staff for that? Uh, they seem to be proposing five teams of four or five each, so, uh, and they're all large enough. They have many more staff than that, so they, they can do this, and that, that part of it, they're getting their feet wet, is included in the basic fee. Mm -hmm. I don't think any of them are not. I, well, they're all They're all qualified. They're all, and they all, the three that are not scamming, all understand they're coming, they would be coming into a new town, so that they built that in. I think what was significant in just looking at all the proposals is the Melanson and Heath one was the only one that kind of put more constrictions on what they would do. It was the um, mm -hmm. the four departments instead of six, which may or may not be a big deal. Then there's the, the grants, which I think is a really big point that would need to be clarified. And then on page 30, the routine assistance, they were the only one who said the routine assistance throughout the year is included in our fixed fees, 
But if you need us to be available more than a nominal amount of time, we will be at these standard mm -hmm. hourly rates. Whereas the other three kind of indicate we're here to help you and throughout the year. Throughout the year. And so if you wanted to pursue this quote, you would want to ask them kind of what nominal means. Mm -hmm. All right, you know, we could set a number of hours per month, whatever you know we need in the way of services, and tell everybody, okay, this is what you know, we'll limit it to this amount, but we want this amount for and, free in the kind of the basic fee. Yeah. And again, on uh, on on this on this one, though the initial price, it's a great price point of sixty two five consistently, but again, it didn't include all the grants. And it didn't include the two extra departments should we choose to take them. And roughly, what would you estimate? You gave an estimate for grant, what they would charge actually, in your opinion, for, for covering the grants? Well, it was 3000 per grant. And, and we would have somewhere close to 30 oh, extra okay. grants, so 90000 okay. If we wanted every one of them audited, $90,000. Mm -hmm. so. What does total not to exceed fee mean? For the basics, that is that the are you looking at the basic services? I'm looking at the same page we were looking at before. Uh, 31 of Melanson Heath? No, uh, uh, Melanson Heath, yeah. That's it. Well, that's for all the fees, all the services they're saying they're going to give us, including the caveats about limited access to their time, uh, limited number of grants being reviewed, and limited number of departments being So total not to exceed doesn't mean that it's inclusive of everything? Right. Okay. They're, they're, I mean, they're stating that they're giving up these limited services. Mm -hmm. So right. total not to exceed means not to exceed, meaning once you exceed, that's when we start tagging on. Oh, yeah, and total not to exceed what they propose to do for that month. Right. Well, that, but that's what I'm wondering. If, if it means that, then that means that that's... And, I mean, the other way of reading that is that they would do all those things and it wouldn't exceed $62,500. But they specifically, but their list of what they included was a grant in each school mm -hmm. and four departments rather than six. So right, it won't exceed the sixty two five for what they're saying they'll do, which doesn't include mm -hmm. two other departments and all the rest of the grants. Right, that's my understanding. We could yeah. ask them if they understand it that way also. Mm -hmm. So, but it would seem that in fact, our price point leader is not what it appears to be. And to get a real bottom line from them would require more work on our part to communicate with them again and get them to. Well, it may be worth asking because I find it hard to believe that they would tack on for a cost of $90,000 something scam would do for 64400 That doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. that, that, doesn't, that doesn't sound like it makes sense at all. I think it's worth the question. Mm -hmm. Right. The, uh, our I'm not familiar enough with the auditing process of whether Scanlon, uh, when the departments say they look at every single grant, is that a full audit or is there a lesser, they, they audit, yeah. do a full audit mm -hmm. on? Yeah. So Susan, do you have an answer for that? Um, when you were at schools? When I was in the schools, I would get a, a report on the state audits and the federal audits, and they would look at the starting balance and the expenditures, and they would you know, tell us if we had inappropriately spent a certain, you know. Mm -hmm. So they, to do that, so, they clearly had to. So they kind of do have to look at, um, but I mean, that's, it, there's a report that we issue out of newness, and they look at that and see starting balance, mm -hmm. spend it on all these things, and, you know, and you'll want, you know, they give us audit findings if we made mistakes. Um, okay. So Joe, would you be able to get some clarification on that, that Jesse's talking about? Because if we're looking at possibly whatever 25 to 30 grants, but they're going to be charging us at 3,000 for each grant, I agree with them. That's 90. Right. I, I think there's. It's likely they would charge us extra, but I don't think they would be talking 90 thousand dollars probably. Uh, but we would probably at want 30, more than one audit. I can see what the counselor is getting that if you're going at 30 grants. And they're going to charge us anyways three dollars. I mean three thousand for each grant, correct? Yeah, so I mean, that's anything over readers. that is three thousand each. So we should ask and get the real number. Again. Exactly. Okay. So I think that verification needs to be. Okay. So we've got a question about the number of departments and a question about the cost of all the grants for this the 
potential bid. Yeah. And, and what nominal? Um, what nominal means? Yeah. Nominal. Uh, we call we call our offer the Refer to an audit of three major grant programs. Uh, it's unclear whether that is limiting it to and not looking at all of the school grants. To me, that's you know a question. That's an expensive asked. question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, they, in their proposal, limit their audit to three major grant programs, and I don't know if that includes all of the grants in all in the, both school systems. So. That would be something to clarify with them. Okay. Do they actually look at everything and they're just, as a shorthand, referring to CDBG, NPS, and Smithwork as grant programs? Thank you. So that's still a question. And was there any any other areas in which they did conform, in your opinion? Uh, not them. Uh, Powers and Sullivan, uh, Ann Mellons and Heath. Uh, refer to documentation being provided to them electronically. Uh, so we would be pulling all the documents, scanning them, and sending them. What our RFP said was during their field work, they would come in, look, you know, we would direct them to where the files are, they pull the files they want, copy them if they want copies, and refile. So that's a very, for those two, Melanson and Heath and Powers and Sullivan, they're varying from what we asked for. Again, we can. Ask them if they would do it the way we asked, or do we, mm -hmm. as a city, want to mm -hmm. change how we do things? Mm -hmm. uh, but that, getting on the same page so that the price uh -huh. reflects what they're doing would be good. Because that takes our staff time to do that, and but neither of these are local. In fact, the only one that's really local is Scanlon, right? Uh, well, we have one in Waysville. They have oh, they have a Greenfield one. Right. Okay. So very close to there. So they could, but then again, they want electronic posting, right? Yes. So we'd have to, that would have an impact on staff time. Susan, do you have any, knowing how the departments work, is that going to be burdensome for them to do that? Um, it certainly will take more time, whether it's burdensome or not, I don't know. It would take more time. I did notice, as I was looking at the proposal set, they all had a different kind of total of hours. Like Powers and Sullivan said the total hours they estimated 498. Lanson and Heath said 661, and Clifton Larson said 800. And Tom did not put his in hours, hours. he put it in days. So he had estimated 12 days, but he didn't say how. Like when he comes, he usually brings like, I would say, eight staff. Yeah, there's a staff. gang of them every time I've seen them. So it's hard, so I don't know hours wise how that stacks up against the, the Scanlon proposal. 
proposal, but they thought that was kind of, uh, you know, 498, 661, and 800 seemed like kind of a wide variation. For the same work. Yeah, so um, that was one thing I noticed. I, the other thing is Clifton Larson, um, I mean, if you were going to take one out of the mix at this point, I would suggest the Clifton Larson one just because it's the most expensive of them. I think all four firms demonstrated that they have the experience and the staffing to do this. I think they all had done Massachusetts communities of similar size. So I think they all meet that kind of experience qualification. So I mean, if, if I were you, if I was thinking of taking one out of the mix, I would take Clifton Larson because they're, I mean, just on the face, they're 27,000 higher than Melanson Heath. They're 17,900 higher than Scanlon and 7,500 higher than Powers and Sullivan. So, I mean, just for ease of discussion, if you took the highest one out and focused on the other three, that might make the comparison. Um, I also thought the Clifton Larson proposal was the most kind of canned looking mm -hmm. proposal. Mm -hmm. Kind of like, kind of looked like they just they no. spend a lot of time about that. Yeah. No, a, a question on the elected electronic delivery of, of what we want them to review. In your opinion, I know the staff, when the audits are here, they have to spend time producing things and giving them to them. Um, would your opinion be that it would be more, because they're going to spend some time anyways on this, is it going to be more time and more troublesome to pull the documents and electronically scan them and send them to them than it would to just pull the documents and hand them to them? going to depend on what document. So say they want to print out from Munis, Joyce can just download that and into a PDF and email it to them. So that would be simple. Right? The other question though is when they get out to the departments and do the testing, like they'll go over to HR and they'll pull um, random, random number of files. So the question maybe to ask the firms is are you going to come over? Are you going to randomly pull the files? I have to believe that they do that because like if they left pulling the files to us, that's not really doing a, a test because of course we're going to pull the files that are most completed or something like that. So mm -hmm. I would think they would, but you know, then, you know, so I can't, so I guess that would be a question if you decide you want to interview these firms to kind of find out what they would expect electronically versus what they would come and do now. Mm -hmm. Like right now, Tom would probably walk into Joyce and say, run, you know, the uh, general fund revenues expenditures and she would run it in Munis and print it out and yeah, take cool. it. But they, they do do a lot of copying. So they, they come to my office and they might say, um, I need to see this related to this borrowing. And so I'll, I'll pull the document and give it to them and they'll walk away and make copies of pertinent pages. So they do the legwork themselves yeah. right versus saying, you know, either email it to me you know, as a PDF document or whatever, so you'll have to do that like work right. to get it to them rather than just handing it to them. Right. Them. For some things, some things I think it would be as easy as it is now, but some things mm -hmm. might might take more time. Mm -hmm. so, My question is that which I have concerns is what do we select, and the recommendation comes from City Council. I have concerns about how whoever is going to get up to speed. To me, I have concerns with that because it's going to take a period of time. I mean, if we choose to interview them, whoever we select. So the the audit firm we select. I think last year they just made their presentation to this committee, right? They didn't present to the whole council. Right. They only did. Well, that was scary. That was an eight. Right. We but, had him forever. Right. But if we switch to somebody else, that's who would present to us. But that's what I just said. Yeah. But it's going to take no more time than it does with scary. Oh, yes, it will. It will. Okay. Well, they all acknowledge in their proposals that there is a learning curve in that first year. That's they right. They have to, you know, adapt. They're auditing to our existing organization. So they have to come and figure out who does what for the whole city. Right. I thought at least you know, it would be up to a year. Right, and they, they very clearly acknowledge that that's a time-consuming process. Mm -hmm. 
So if we go with the logic of discounting Clifton Larson just because they're so far out of the price range as the other two, uh, that means the other the Greenfield firm we have to follow up on. Will they do six departments if we want them to? Will they do all the grants? What's nominal communications mean? And then make a real determination if the electronic delivery of data to them is going to be cumbersome, more cumbersome to the staff or not. And, and with Powers and Sullivan, they were, the only issue we had with them was electronic delivery or was there some other way that they didn't conform? That was the only thing. Yeah, and they did say they, um, they did talk about the transition. They were probably the, of the three new firms, they were probably the one that talked about the impact of a transition and how they would work with us to make that as smooth as possible. That was Powers and Sullivan. And what else was not conforming about them? Uh, the electronic provision of documents. That's it? Yeah. Well, that we didn't have any issues. They would do all six departments. They would do all the grants. They would they reliably would communicate. Right. They had no limits. statements where they limited our scope of services. Okay. They didn't say you, you know they they didn't say you can't call us or if you call us and it's going to take more time. And they're they're an Eastern Mass company, right? They're they're most of their communities are in the eastern part of the state. Yeah. They are. Right? It's, it's this, you know, so. They have Springfield. They did. Or Westfield. I mean, they, all of these firms had a good representation yeah. of Massachusetts. No, they clearly are in the business of municipal audits. Right. They're right. all, you know. Yeah, their sense. towns were Brookline, Belmont, they do City of Springfield, and Hingham, Somerville, Wellesley, and Malibu's. But then on pages 18, like they have cities and towns with over a million revenue, cities and towns with under a million revenue, they do school districts, they do retirement systems, so um, they were pretty big outfit. Yeah, it seems they all can handle the work, but just getting them to be bidding on the same thing mm -hmm. is work that we got to mm -hmm. I mean, if you narrow it down to two, could have the, you know, you could have them come in and you could interview mm -hmm. them both, and then we could have at that interview. We could have the auditor here so that she could ask, like, you know, so what, you know, what kinds of things that you're going to want from me. And the, the one thing that's somewhat that I would like to ask whoever um, is, and I saw it in one proposal. I forget which one. Um, one of them said, yeah, and if you want us to help you with the balance sheet and certification that's another additional service and I did talk to Joyce today and she said well you know they pretty much prepare the balance sheet and they prepare which time. one was who was that which one was that I don't recall maybe that's might be, I think question it might I think everybody just to double check I think yes, everybody if you're going to ask I think that's a question we want to make sure that yeah you are going to basically help us prepare the balance sheet free cash and balance and free cash and balance and right that should was, be on the And there's the question of the departments, the grants, what is nominal communication, and does it include 
free cash and balance. I mean, those to me would be real questions. I mean, if you bring the lands in and Oh, um, Melinda and Heath and Scandal. Are they local with your family? Right. And where's and our, our soul? If you bring in Melanson and Heath, then you can really ask them about the grants. Because I, I have to agree with Council Adams. I can't imagine they're going to charge us $90,000. No. I know. Yeah, that's 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 that just doesn't right make that. any sense. But mm -hmm. it is, it's so spelled out there in their thing. It really does make the, I don't want to be stupid and say, if I take this right. literally, that means it could be behind me. So. Mm -hmm. um, and that, but this, this can be done with a phone call. Yeah. I mean, we could call them and say, okay, here's the questions after our review we have for you. But I, to me, the electronic delivery to me is a big bugaboo because that could be a real issue. Being staffed yes, like serious. This. You're not used to that. I mean. Right. It's from the auditor's office, and I, I you, work in the auditor's office. I don't do auditing, but when the auditors are in there pulling records and making their copies, it's hard to do our work without us actually having to do the pulling and the copying and the refining. Just physically getting around in the office is, is tough. I, I don't weigh that very heavily. I feel like in the future, probably not the too distant future, every company will require that. Maybe. But if, if we do decide to go that way, all the companies should be bidding on that. Uh, One way or the other. Amount of labor they're not happy to do. Mm -hmm. So you know, give everybody the chance to bid on us doing all that work. So um, you wanted to invite, I mean, is the suggestion to invite Lance and Heath and Scanlon in? And if not, why not power? And if so, why not power and sell them? Well, you certainly can invite them. We can invite all three of them in. Though I would like to get the answer to the question, you know, to those questions, because if once we add to the Lanson and Heath all of those items, if that kicks them up over seventy thousand dollars, maybe we don't want to talk to them anymore. You know, we might want to get the answer to that question before we say, okay, mm -hmm. you know, and we need to move relatively quickly on this. We probably need to meet again next week to do this, you know, because theoretically. We were going to try and do something for the city council meeting on the third. Mm -hmm. um, so it's almost like we need to. September 17th. Or the 17th is the actual. So we, we, make, we make a recommendation, right? It's just a recommendation. Yeah. It's a full council vote. Oh, it's a full council vote. We just recommend it. September? It's September 15th. Yeah. So if we, if we uh -huh. miss the third, we need to have a special council meeting to get it done the week in between. If we miss the third, if it's possible to do it. For the council meeting, even though it might be scheduling it. The deadline is the 15th, according to the charter. Okay, so we'd, yeah. so we'd have to. Oh, a special meeting for A special meeting, meeting of council. Well, we're going to have to have another meeting ourselves just to, uh, if we're going to physically interview these people, we're going to have to have another meeting ourselves. Uh -huh. uh, how long would it take at a city council meeting? Well, I don't think we want to interview them at a city council meeting. We've done the Board of Health. Why? It just, it's just going to be time consuming. I mean, and then we got to deliberate on why, it. Why, Councillor, why couldn't you come in earlier instead of 7 o'clock? Come in, I think Jesse, you were mentioning maybe possibly. It may be, but we were also possibly thinking about scheduling Public Works Committee meeting that. Why? Before you're, Council. You're, you're at Before six, the September 3rd Council. Six, was that, was that, did yeah. it get scheduled? Oh, yeah. oh so it's, 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 okay, so that time is already. That yeah. time was already taken. Yeah. Because uh, I would, I would I almost suggest meeting. if we're going to talk to the people, we try and talk to them next Tuesday, right. and have a meeting next Tuesday and do our interviewing then. Mm -hmm. The question for me would just be, you know, if uh, Mendelson and Heath is off the charts once we have them add these other services that we want to know about, mm -hmm. then maybe we don't want to talk to them anymore. Right. You know. So, right. but how quickly, Joe, could you get to the bottom of? Those. Uh, I can email questions tomorrow and uh, they'll probably get back within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. when, when would we have to, if we're meeting next Tuesday, when would we have to post that? Friday. Friday? So we have But, but, but uh, let me just interject here. You already have a meeting scheduled for Tuesday unless you're planning to cancel the economic and community development and mm -hmm. housing and land use. Um, well, yeah, I don't think it would be agenda at this point, so it might be safe to go ahead. 
Yeah. It's just not happening. And is there yeah. any reason why we wouldn't want to hold these interviews during the day? Does it have to be oh, a nighttime? I can't. Meeting? No, you have to wait till the I'm asking the question. I'm just Don't want to upset the judge. <laughs> 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 no, well, got to go, judge. <laughs> Sorry. No, Lock them up. Just, I, I just <laughs> but we could do five. Yeah. What do you do right? We could make five, right? Because you're, you're done. Okay. When will this be? Possible? Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Did you want to have them come consecutively? I guess. All the, at the same time? No, I, I think, you know, we're going to oh, come on. Why not, guys? We'll have a steel cage match and see who survives to do the other thing. No, I think, um, what do we need, a half hour piece? Probably? I think you have to do at least a half hour. Half hour piece. Okay. So that would be on the 1st of September that mm -hmm. we're talking about? Yep. Yeah. About what time? Five. Five. Five o'clock. So what day is it? September 1st? First I'll have to leave. I'll have to leave because I have something So the first at five. You're good for how long? That's fine. Okay, that's good. With a half hour, and so you want? Are you having two or three? Um, what what is your feeling? That Scanlon is a known commodity. Do you do you need to talk to them again, or do you just want to talk to the other two? Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if there's a need to talk to Scanlon. I don't think it's necessary so, because I know what Scanlon's all about. So they, I mean. That truly is a default thing for us. We know they can do the job if, if we don't find somebody we like better. So then we'd only really need to talk to two at five. Yes. <clears throat> All right. And so do you want to choke? Is it possible for you to talk to Mendelssohn and Heath and get the answers to those questions and let us let us know if they're with those added things, are they going to be able to be under $70,000? Is that are you reasonable with that as a cutoff? If they're over seventy, we don't need to talk to them. Or is that you okay with that, yeah. Jesse? If Mendelssohn and Heath with the add-ons pops over seventy thousand, well, well, I mean it depends. Well, it's, I'd like to hear the number. I mean, if it's seventy, you know, I mean, power and soul, it's sixty-nine. Mm -hmm. uh, we can cut off at like seventy-five. Let's just schedule them. Yeah, it's easier. Because <laughs> we only got two. Should I ask them if they have somebody available yeah. next yes. Tuesday? Mm -hmm. Between five and six. I liked what Council Murphy said about a cut off on 70,000, but I think it's best to bring them in. Let's mm -hmm. talk. So you're talking bringing in Melanson and Heath and Powers and Sullivan. Sullivan. You're kind of putting Clifton Larson to the side and still considering. Scanlon, but you don't need to. We don't need the talks to Scanlon because we know Scanlon. Right? Yeah, okay. So, um, but Joe, do let me know what Mendelssohn Heath comes in at with all of the other stuff for sure right. added in and what nominal communications are. And I can communicate to the other two counselors mm -hmm. and see if they say, you know, nominal communications is troublesome. And they're at seventy-three thousand dollars. You still want to hear from? Them. You still want to talk to them or not? That and then we can just you can decide so that we don't wait. You know, we're not wasting time with yep. somebody that is going to be troublesome for. So Clifton Larson and Allen, they're gone. They're from Lexington, yeah. so we're not going to even bother. With well, them. no, they're just they're starting high, and they don't include all the grants. No, so. exactly. Mm -hmm. Do you want to see a particular person, like the the, the highest person being proposed? As part of our team here for the interview, or do you want just anybody from well, the firm? Or? I mean, it's somebody that's got to have the authority to tell us, you know, that we can hold to what they commit to us. Is there? It's going to be somebody who can negotiate fees with us. Would be my thought. It's going to be somebody that has the authority to commit the company to do what they say they're going to do, and whoever that may be. It may be a totally different person that you know bids and contracts for the work than it is that actually does the work. So. Okay, just somebody with power to negotiate. Someone with power to negotiate, for sure, would be that. And I'll invite um, the uh, auditor and the collector treasurer, if that's okay, just sure. so that yeah. they're here and they can kind of ask. Sure. I think it'd be important for, I'd like to find out, you know, about yeah. the um, free cash mm -hmm. and about yeah. the balance sheet. Sure, because we, uh, you know, we understand, you know, they can't be part of the selection Absolutely. process. But they could be part of the questioning because they're the ones that that are in up to their necks when this takes place and have to provide documents. So, you know, let them 
though we, we're comfortable that we're going to deliberate and make a recommendation, they're not going to participate in that, but they are going to participate in does it include this, does it include that, you know, the things that they were on in. And, and Pam also, at my request, made a couple of, couple of reference calls. But is it safe to say everybody basically passed muster as far as their references were concerned? Um, I, You've yes. got in your packet what? Yeah, and I do have, um, I just want to point out a couple of things, and that is that um, the people that I spoke to that are doing the um, electronic transmission of mm -hmm. information spoke very, very highly about that process. Oh, okay. It actually helped them. What they said was it cut down on the interference of the auditors during the day-to-day -day activities. Um, that was their, their observation. So they liked that? Yep. Uh, most of them felt that staying with the same auditing firm over a period of time is really not a big deal. They suggested, one firm suggested that if we were interested in having a new set of eyes look at the books, perhaps a diff different members of the same auditing firm. Just might different be personnel. Brought in to, you know, uh, give, give a, a different snapshot of the, of the, you know, what's going on. Um, you know, most of the firms liked the companies that they were working with, so they spoke to. At least yeah, one I mean, rep from every yeah. company. I mean, Except if you look at some of the proposals that some of these communities have been using that term for 10, 10 or more yeah. years, so it's yeah. not unheard of. To use that term. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Do we need anything yeah. more? So we're going to post a meeting for next Tuesday at 5. We're going to invite. Mendelson and Heath and Powers and Sullivan in, and Joe's going to let me know how Mendelson and Heath adjust their price. All right, I'll ask all the questions and, and get you the answers. What is what does this do? And then we'll let you know if that you know we'll communicate if if we feel it's too high, we'll let you know that perhaps we don't want to see them if it's outrageous. But you'll hear you'll get a communication with what the number is and. Do you want them or not, based on what the final line is? Mm -hmm. So, right, they may say we'll keep the same number and include all those yep. services. Yeah, right. Well, we'd love that. Great. Since I, yeah, with scandals, how how much of an increase have they gone up on the city? Because it's that, that's a funny because I'm just looking. I sent that to Joe and Pam, didn't I? I sent you the um. Because I know you I have it. So I know I have it. So hold on. It's modest. Not, not a big jump, like I kind of expected. You. Yeah. Well, it was sixty-one five for for fiscal year fifteen, right? Yeah. Sixty-one five, and we're sixty-four, four hundred, or two thousand. Yeah, so it's like two thousand dollars extra. Yeah, I said that last week. But but then but then you know the sixty-one five didn't include the gas fee. The new gas fee yeah. stuff. So, and this price does the one that you have. Right. Now, so. so they. I'm doing more work, so I did go over there. Looking at, I sent it on Thursday to you guys. I think. To Joe Cook and to Pam. Have they actually given you a price for this year? They're for yes. 16? Yes. Okay, that's what you're looking for. Yeah, I don't well, know. What's She's looking. To, oh. Just see, sent to Pam. Oh, here it is. Okay. All right. So, in FY14, we paid Tom 54.6. In 13, we paid 55.5. But that included the police investigation. Mm -hmm. um, that was 5,000 by that itself. That was 5,000 by itself. And then the, in 12, we paid 52.250. And that includes all of the um, school year, end of the year reports. That actually includes student activity accounts in and all the grants. And all that. It included all the grants. Um, the one reason I believe that all the costs are going up, though, is because of GASB 67 and 68. And in the fiscal year that just ended, 2015, Tom is charging us for so his 
price went up like four or five thousand just because of gas in sixty. Do you remember what he told us sixteen would be? Uh sixteen he said sixty four four. So fifteen. Which is the oh, same as 15. what's been here. I know I don't know what fifteen is. I'd have to go back and look. Right. We must get confused about was, the audit of in FY sixteen is of FY fifteen and that's what we're doing. Yeah. So we're working back. FY sixteen. I um, think, and I can't remember what that number is. And, and I, I believe I believe it was 615. 615 sixty-one five. Sixty-one five. Sixty-one five. Including, yeah, 61 5 including gas fees. So, so he didn't go up too much. Now we actually have that. Going from 2012 to, to 2016. That's how much? 2012. Well, 2012 he was under 60. Yeah, in 2012, he was 52,250. Oh, in the most recent year, which is 2014, he was 54,6, and he's 64. So between 14 and 16, he's gone up 10. With new gas fees. But that's 10, five of that is the new gas fees. Mm. So this, this is 61,5, the contract. 61,5, um, okay. So. And, and I'm assuming that we've asked for a three year. We don't actually, actually do that, do we? I I don't think we, we would have to, but if I think Melanson I think Melanson he the new firms are really gonna because they basically they're gonna take the hit the first year. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna hire them, you're gonna probably Right. Work. Oh we couldn't do it with that. Yeah. But we could do it with Scanlon actually. So. Scanlon, yeah. Go he's back so and he's say, always been willing to do year to year. So we could go back and say, give us a one year price. Yeah, he was the only one who didn't quite follow the formula. If you look at the prices, like we told everybody, give us the same for the three years, and he kind of did 64.4, 65.8, and 66.4. Yeah, why is that? I mean, maybe we don't know, but. I, I don't know, but. Does that make it non-conforming? It was another thing that would need uh, answer. Now, do we say, do we say give us three year price, pricing for three years, but did we stipulate it would be the same every year? Yes. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Right. It was in kind of small type on oh, top okay. of the bid form. I think we just missed it. I mean, if you they took the total to bid of 196.6 and divided it by three, you would end up with six and five and five. 65.5. I mean, if we're going to consider people not conforming because they at, they want to do electronic submissions. We have to consider them not conforming because they asked. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't and it doesn't seem like the electronic yeah. transmission for the towns that are doing it is that cumbersome. So well, some seem to like it. Some seem like yeah. some things so. are advantage because. Yeah. Okay. So um, we have any other? We set for tonight. You think? Okay. We good? We got our all our action items. So Joe will let us know. What exactly that does to the prices, and we'll be back here next Tuesday. Joe, jo, are you planning to communicate with them about the next Tuesday, or do you want me to? I'll ask them if they can send something. Okay, and then the responsible officer and get back to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then um, I can send them a formal request after as a follow-up. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because next Tuesday is the day after the holiday. No, it's another week away. It's a six, it's, wait, it's a seven. So we're okay next week. Because the holiday is strangely a week into the month. Yeah, the Tuesday's holiday, the first. Yeah, the so holiday's the next. First Monday is until like the it's seventh. The seventh. Or yeah. <coughs> and if you want to arrange that, that would say me being in the middle of it. If you could arrange the interview and I'll get the questions in. Labor Day's a seven. I, I just thought you were going to ask them about whether they were available. Yeah, but if. Mm -hmm. If you would do that, that would be great. Okay. So if you, I won't be, if you I, find I, out if I'm they're available, back and forth. yeah, if you find out if they're available, because we want to determine if I, metals. I was just trying to cut down on the amount of people that are tackling them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Great yeah. Okay. But if Mendelssohn, you know, you find out what the deal is with Mendelssohn and Heath price wise, if we don't eliminate them, then we'll know, okay, who we're inviting. And we'll okay. Them. And it's, you know, stand to You got different rings for your phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad one. <laughs> Oops, we're still in session. <laughs> so we're good. Yeah. We're All right. Then a motion to adjourn. Second. Second.
Okay, well, okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, guys.